Hey everyone, in this video, we will cover scenario based questions that interviewers might ask. So let's get started. If you had to scale a Spring Boot application to handle high traffic, what strategies would you use? To scale a Spring Boot application for high traffic, we can add more app instances like horizontal scaling and user load balancer to spread out the traffic. Break out our app into microservices so each part can be scaled independently. Use cloud services that can automatically adjust resources based on our application needs. Use caching to store frequently access data, reducing the need to fetch it from the database every time. Implement an API gateway to handle requests and take care of things like authentication. Moving to the next question. Imagine your application requires data from an external REST API to function. Describe how you would use REST template or web client to consume the REST API in your Spring Boot application. Talking about REST template, first I would define a REST template bean in a configuration class using bean annotation so it can be auto injected anywhere I need it. Then I would use REST template to make HTTP calls by creating an instance and using methods like get for object for a get request providing the URL of the external API and the class type for the response. Now talking about web client, I would define a web client bean similarly using bean annotation. Then I would use this web client to make a synchronous request calling method like get method, specifying the URL and then using retrieve method to fetch the response. I would also handle the data using methods like body to mono or body to flux depending on if I am expecting a single object or a list. Moving to the next question, your Spring Boot backend needs to accept cross-origin request from a specific front-end domain. Explain how you would configure course policies in your application. To enable cross-origin request from a specific domain in Spring Boot, I would use a cross-origin annotation on my controller or method like cross-origin annotation and I'll pass a URL to the origins. For a global approach, I would configure a WebMVC configurer bean overriding the add course mapping method to apply rules across all controllers using the add mapping method of registry and the allowed origin methods and I'll pass the URL into that method. This setup allows my backend to accept requests from a designated frontend domain and enhancing security by restricting other cross origin interactions. Moving to the next question. Your Spring Boot application is experiencing performance issues under high load. What are the steps you would take to identify and address the performance? First, I would identify the specific performance issues using monitoring tools like Spring Boot Actuator or Splunk. I would also analyze application logs and metrics to spot any patterns or errors, especially under high load. Then, I would start a performance test to replicate the issue and use a profiler for code level analysis. After getting findings, I might optimize the database, implement caching or use scaling options. It's also crucial to continuously monitor the application to prevent future issues. Moving to the next question, imagine you need to make a simple web application with Spring Boot that serves a static homepage and a dynamic page displaying current server time. Discuss the project structure you would use. I would add main application and a web controller in source main java directory and the controller would have mappings for the home page and the server time page. I would add static content like index.html in source main resource static while dynamic content uses theme leaf templates in source main resources templates. Configuration settings would be there in source main resources application.properties. This setup efficiently organizes static and dynamic resources and ensuring clear separation and easy management of web content. Moving to the next question, your application behaves differently in development and production environments. How would you use Spring Profiles to manage these differences? To handle differences between development and production environments, I would use Spring Profiles by defining environment specific configurations in application dev properties for development and application prod properties for production. I can easily switch behaviors based on the active profiles. Activating these profiles is simple either by setting the spring profiles active property using a command line argument or through an environment variable. Additionally with the profile annotation I would selectively load certain beans or configurations according to the current environment and ensuring that my application adapts seamlessly to both development and production settings. Moving to the next question, what strategies would you use to optimize the performance of a Spring Boot application? Let's say my Spring Boot application is taking too long to respond to user request. I could 
implement caching for frequently accessed data, optimize database queries to reduce the load on the database, use asynchronous methods for operations like sending emails, load balancer if traffic is high, optimize the time complexity of the code, use webflux to handle a large number of concurrent connections. Moving to the next question, describe a scenario where a Spring Boot application needs to dynamically switch between multiple data sources at runtime based on the request context. Imagine a Spring Boot application that serves users from different places like Europe or Asia. We switch between databases based on where the user is from. This means if someone from the Europe visits the app, they get the data from the European database, making the content more relevant to them. We set this up by having a special part in the application that knows which database to use when it sees where the request is coming from. This way users see information and offers that make sense for their region. Moving to the next question, discuss how you would add a GraphQL API to an existing Spring Boot RESTful service. First, I would add GraphQL Java and GraphQL Spring Boot starter dependencies to my POM XML file or build grid file. Secondly, I would create a GraphQL schema file in source main resources folder. Then I would implement data features to retrieve data from the existing services or directly from the database and moving ahead. I would configure a GraphQL service using the schema and data features. Then I would expose the GraphQL endpoint and make sure it is correctly configured. Finally, I would test the GraphQL API using tools like GraphIQL or Postman to make sure it's working as expected. Moving to the next question, describe how you would secure sensitive data in a Spring Boot application that is accessed by multiple users with different roles. To keep sensitive information safe in a Spring Boot app used by many people with different roles, I would do a few things. First, I would make sure everyone who uses the app proves who they are through a login system. Then I would use special settings to control what each person can see or do in the app based on their role. Like some can see more sensitive stuff while other can't. I would also scramble any secret information stored in the app or sent over the internet so that only the right people can understand it. Plus, I would keep passwords and other secrets keys out of the code and in a safe place, making them easy to change if needed. Lastly, I would keep track of who looks at or changes the sensitive information just to be extra safe. This way, only the right people can get to the sensitive data and it stays protected. Moving to the next question, in an IoT application scenario, explain how a Spring Boot backend could be designed to efficiently process and analyze real-time data streams from thousands of IoT devices. In an IoT setup, a Spring Boot backend can manage data from lots of devices by using Apache Kafka, a tool that helps collect all the data. It then processes this data in real time, figuring out what's important and what's not. After sorting the data, it stores it in a database designed for quick access and analysis. This way, the system can handle tons of information coming in all at once, making sure everything runs smoothly and quickly. Discuss the specific security challenges associated with using WebSockets in a Spring Boot application. WebSockets in a Spring Boot application faces security issues because they keep a constant connections open between the user and the server, unlike regular web pages. This can lead to risk like attackers hijacking these connections to intercept or send fake messages. Also, without the usual security checks we have for web pages, it's a trickier to stop unauthorized access. To keep things safe, it's important to make sure only the right people can connect and to encrypt the data being sent back and forth. Moving to the next question, how would you implement efficient handling of large files uploaded in a Spring Boot REST API, ensuring that the system remains responsive and scalable? To handle big files uploads in a Spring Boot REST API without slowing down the system, I would use a method that processes files in the background and streams them directly where they need to go like a hard drive or the cloud. This way, the main part of the app stays fast and can handle more users or tasks at the same time. Also, by saving files outside the main server, like on Amazon S3, it helps the app run smoothly even as it grows or when lots of users are uploading files. How you would use Spring WebFlux to consume data from an external service in a non-blocking manner and process this data reactively within your Spring Boot application. In a Spring Boot app using Spring WebFlux, I would use WebClient to fetch data from an external service without slowing down things. WebClient makes it easy to get data in a way that doesn't stop other parts of the app from working. When the data comes in, it's handled reactively, meaning I can work with it on the go like filtering or changing it without waiting for everything to finish loading. 
this keeps the app fast and responsive even when dealing with lots of data or making many requests moving to the next question imagine you need to develop a rest api in a spring boot application that allows clients to manage user data explain how you would structure your application to build a rest api in spring boot for managing user data i would organize the app into the three main parts controller services and repositories controllers would deal with web request using endpoints like user to handle different actions getting adding updating and deleting user info service would focus on the app's logic like checking if a user's data meets certain criteria before saving it repositories would connect to the database to actually save update or fetch user data this setup keeps everything neat and make it easier to update parts of the app without affecting others Imagine you are designing a Spring Boot application that interfaces with multiple external APIs. How would you handle API rate limits and failures? To handle API rate limits and failures in a Spring Boot application, I would use a circuit breaker to manage failures, implement rate limiting to avoid exceeding API limits, add a retry mechanism with exponential backup for temporary issues, use a caching to reduce the number of requests. This approach helps keep the application reliable and efficient. Moving to the next question, you need to deploy a Spring Boot application to a cloud platform. What step would you take and how would you configure the application properties for different environments? To deploy a Spring Boot application to the cloud like AWS or Azure, first I would package it using Maven or Cradle. Next, I would pick a cloud service that make deployment easy such as AWS Elastic or Azure App Service. For different settings in development, staging and production, I would use Spring Profiles. I would make separate property files for each environment like application dev properties for development. While deploying, I would choose the right profile for that environment, making sure that the app uses the correct settings. This way, the apps run smoothly in any environment with the right configurations. Explain how you would use application events in Spring Boot to notify different parts of your application about significant activities. In Spring Boot, to let different parts of the app know about important activities, I would use application events. First, I would create a special event classes for different types of activities like when a new user sign up, then I would write listeners for these events which are just piece of code that wait for a specific event to happen and then do something in response. To tell the app when something important happens, I would publish these events from anywhere in the app. This way, parts of the app can communicate and react to events without being directly connected, keeping the code clean and organized. 